Hey there, everybody. Welcome to this edition of ESPN FC's Extra oh, Time. Craig, that, Stevie, and... That was an extra. Uh, yeah. That yeah, one was... Questions. Yeah. Yeah, you laid that one on thick. Yeah, well, was, I mean, that's that was the point, isn't it? <laughs> that was, I've not been here for a while. Yeah. I haven't been here for a while. Maybe I'm a little rusty. I'm back. It's, it's exciting to be back in studio with you guys. Got some great uh, questions here. The first well, one. Well, that'll be a change. Uh, Adam's interior decorator. What's the more likely outcome here? Newcastle finishing fourth or Arsenal winning the league? Stevie? Newcastle finishing fourth. You agree? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Well, you know, City, yeah, un unlikely they're going to yeah. fall away. Gab, care to make it three for three, or do you think uh, Arsenal have a better chance of winning the league than Newcastle finishing top four? Well, is it fourth or is it top four? Let's because say top going, four, because fourth is very specific, Gab. Third. Don't be persnickety. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to go with Newcastle. What was that word you used there? Persnickety. Persnickety. Finicky, like overly. Yeah, yeah, I didn't uh, think of the nest in it. Anyway, what do I know? Dan's favorite hair gel asks, for the gents, which Champions League team could star in the dark horse spoiler role? Well, bearing in mind, we didn't think that we would be doing this at the start of the season. I don't think they're a real dark horse now. I'd have to say Napoli. It's a good shout. But that's an obvious one now. It certainly right. wasn't an obvious one three months people ago. People would still, still probably consider you don't want Dark to Horse, it, right? Well, they're not. I'm sure they're not with the bookies' favourites, but you do not want to play them if, if they're fully fit and a full team to pick from. Stevie? Don't think I can beat that. Really? I mean, you could throw in Bruges. That's probably an invisible rather than a Dark Horse. Mm. That's a real. But, yeah, I, don't, I can't beat Napoli, I'm afraid. No, nope. no. Nope. Gab, you going with Napoli or you going with somebody else as a, as a proper dark horse here in the Champions League? I'm going to go with somebody else um, who I think people haven't really talked about much, maybe because, you know, Napoli, Fascalia, Osimhen, whatever. And of course, Napoli played Liverpool. And Lozano, um, don't forget. I'm going to go with Benfica because, mm. of course, yes, it's all about, it's all about him. Uh, I go with Benfica because, you know, uh, they've just been, they've had this incredible undefeated run. They ended up topping a group, uh, you know, involving Paris Saint-Germain. And okay, you can crack all the jokes you want about the, the, the result in the final day. Fine, it's not the same number of points as Paris Saint-Germain. And, you know, they're, they're really, they're really working extremely, extremely well together. Uh, I think Roger Schmidt has uh, surpassed all expectations. All right, uh, next question is for you, Gab. Almost everyone keeps telling me France are the World Cup favorites, maybe only behind Brazil. But factoring in all their injuries... Well, they're not favorites, then. Thank you for being so persnickety, Craig. You're welcome. You could have said one of the... <laughs> everybody keeps telling me France... I the... didn't write this. Well, I'm, all I'm saying is... Everybody yeah, but you've got license to change it. <laughs> everybody well, keeps telling me France are the World Cup favorites, apart from Brazil. <laughs> uh, factoring in all of... France's injuries, Gab. Could you please point us to a stable starting eleven and formation uh, for the team of the at the tournament for France at the World Cup? I feel like this is a Jules question, but you hang out with him a lot, so. Well, yeah, I also watch football, so you know I can oh. take a chance at putting together an eleven for, of the World Cup. Take that. <laughs> I mean, is, is that okay? Um, no, look, I. If I had to go with within 11 and, and try to go and read uh, Deschamps' mind, it's not my 11. Uh, this is the 11 I suspect Deschamps might be. Did somebody uh, given him this question be before? At, but, um, you know, he's. He's going to give us the 11. I'm is sorry? It? Gab is just prepared. I think, like I think Guy's been pre warned about Isn't this that question. Is the question? Yes, he's been pre warned about this question. I hope so. Stevie's just impressed I, by the fact that you can. I, that I you think can, you have the. Yeah. The ability to, to whip up a French just, 11. He's going to fire out, not only that, he's going to fire out the 11 as well. I'm impressed. I'm going to try, okay. and I might be forgetting somebody, but he's obviously he's obviously way into uh, way into Pavard and 
uh, and Lucas Hernandez. So if they're fit, I'm assuming they're, they're going to start. I'm not sure that they should be starting, but I think that's what he's going to do. Hugo Lloris, obviously, between the sticks. Um, Kimpembe's had a bit of a rough time. I'm not sure he's an automatic uh, choice uh, anymore. Uh, in midfield, uh, with Conte out and Pogba out, I'm, I would assume he's going to go Chouameni and Rabiot. Uh, I got Mbappe, obviously, out wide, and Benzema, probably uh, Dembele. Mm. Um, that's only nine. That's nine. I need a yeah. centre back, obviously, ton of competition. Left back. Ton of competition at center back. I hope he takes a long, hard look at. No, left back, I got Lucas Hernandez. Uh, I would hope he would go look at uh, Upamecano, possibly Joel Kunde if he's fit. I'm not sure uh, that he will be fit. Um, and again, I'm sure I'm leaving out a very good friend center back, but you did ask me on the What's question. What's Varane's situation? Um, do yeah, we, we know? Oh, obviously, yeah, sorry. If Varane is fit, yeah. if Varane is fit, he's an automatic choice. Yeah. And I suspect he will be fit yeah. for the World Cup. So then I think you're looking more realistically uh, at, at possibly Varane and Kimpembe, Varane and Kunde. Riley, the big golden doodle asks, we don't have the video, so describe to us what it was like when you first got called up to represent Scotland at the World Cup. How excited were you? I guess this is off the heels of all the announcement videos, reaction videos we've been seeing. What was the announcement when when you made the team? Was there like a big show or what'd they do? No, no nothing. we kind of knew. Did they? <laughs> we already knew. Oh, really? Well, when you've played in all the qualifying games, you've got a fair idea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you guys weren't really, <laughs> uh, neither of you was a real bubble player on your no, respective so, teams, right? So, no, Did, was there much pageantry to it? It wasn't a surprise. Was there like an event or anything? No, no, no nothing. not like that. No, no, no. Here's the squad, get on with the, I mean, <laughs> we don't have any, yeah. all this. I mean, they might as well. What are they having? Pyrotechnics? Uh, what about first call? Players coming out that have coming out of like, you know, when you get all the steam. Yes. And they come out, <laughs> walk out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, selected. No. Yes. You gotta sell. You gotta I sell. I mean, the there are some people in the squad. I'm sure in Stevie's squad were the same. I mean, we were quite fortunate. You played all the games, right. unless you had an injury. You not only knew you were in the squad, you knew you were going to play. Right. But there was guys that were, you know, there's some guys like Ali McCoy, Stuart McCall. There were some senior guys who were in their early 30s, 32, 33, who were stalwarts and who were left out. Mm. Now that, I'm sure when they got that phone call, that was a big that, shock to them. That, that would be, a, that would be a, a couple of good phone calls would be one, two, at the time, so we're talking 86, mm -hmm. we're talking Maurice Johnston, who, no question, was one of the best Scottish centre forwards and strikers around, uh, and Alan Hansen, who, no question, was probably the best centre back uh, in the country, and neither of them were in the squad. Huh. That would be the that would be the that would be the, the the phone call to be on the end of listening to that. That's scary to think those two Isn't it? have not never made the Scotland squad. That's when brilliant. you think now about. <laughs> the caps that are well, being handed out. To, oh, good grief. Go on, Gab. I was dying here. Go on, Gab. You say never made the Scotland squad? Yeah, I'm Sorry. I, 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 yeah. I don't want to bring up unpleasant Scottish memories, but pretty sure Hansen was there in 82. I think a he lot was, of people yeah, remember. He was, it, he was right? in 86. Well, he got blamed in 82 got, for running yeah. into Willie Miller. He got a call from Alec Ferguson. Boy, that's why he wasn't there in 86. <laughs> yeah. So, by the way, Gab, we're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about the guy who captained Liverpool to the double that year. Never made the Scotland squad. What was the well, reaction in Scotland? Were people like, but No, you had Willie Miller less, and really? Alex McLeish and... Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't well, care less. People, uh, unfortunately, if you went... Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> if you played in England, mm -hmm. you were uh, a little bit more frowned upon. Okay. <laughs> they, were, they weren't going to make the case as hard for you. If you this is what it's like playing for Scotland. One of the greatest centre-backs that ever kicked the ball in British football, <laughs> used to get booed when he was warming up. Really? For Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd. How can he not make the squad? Seriously. I've never made the squad. Wait, 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 sorry, Sebi, you probably have no idea. Yeah, Sebi, you have no idea what we're talking about here, but it's this I perception hear, um, among certain yeah. people in Scotland. 
It's a what perception. I will explain it then. For not for somebody's, somebody's somebody in the control room is right now. Here's a perception, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. There we go. There, there's a perception among certain people in Scotland that uh, they would have definitely won the World Cup in 1982 had it not been for this unfortunate mix-up between Willie Miller and, and Alan Hansen. And it's incredibly silly, but a lot of people really, really, really believe this. I, I, am I right, Stevie? Is it is it the same? I, I, not, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I will say, though, in 1978, the one before it, People did actually think Scotland were going to win the World Cup. Well, it was because 82 Gabba would disagree, but it's, let me tell you something. When Scotland left for the World Cup in 1978, they got on a bus in. We're really testing the memory banks. Just they got say on, Scotland. They got, a, they got on a <laughs> bus at Hamden Park, right? They got on a bus at Hamden Park to get the bus from Hamden Park to the airport, which is about 30 miles away. And the streets from Hamden Park, including the motorways and everything else, to the airport were four and five deep, both sides of the road, with scarves and waving and flags and all kinds. I mean, the whole country. Ali McCoyst, yeah, Ali McCoyst, Ali McLeod had convinced everybody that Scotland were going to win the World Cup. I mean, it was unbelievable. So what, then after that, everybody just kind of said... Well, after that, it was like... Let down. Well, after that, everyone went... Come, what was it, Ali's Army? I, we're on the march with well, Ali's, Ali's Army. Army. Mm. And Ali's of course, Army. we're going to the Argentine, and, and we'll really shake them up when we win the World Cup. They said we're going to the Argentine. Because Scotland are the greatest football team. Hi. Uh, just to make it rhyme, I love it. Change the hey, that, was a, that was the song. <laughs> that was the song. And didn't quite materialise. Uh, Gab, any chance that Napoli bottles the title, or is it too soon for that kind of question before the World Cup? It's too soon to ask that question, but yeah, it's you know it's an eight-point lead as of tonight. It could be a five-point lead tomorrow night, so uh, it is possible. We have seen collapses. Uh, in the past, in fact, um, in fact, one of the most famous collapses, of course, since we're all going, you know, talking about history here and Ali's army and whatnot, was uh, way back in 1987-88 when uh, uh, Milan won the title coming from behind and Napoli at the time were led by the man for whom the stadium is named, Diego Armando Maradona. Now, there's another factual thing you don't know. In 82, mm -hmm. Scotland would have beat Brazil had David Neri not scored the first goal yeah. and made the Brazilians very angry. Yeah. Scored and too early. They scored too early, and, mm -hmm. and, and then uh, Socrates <laughs> and Zico <laughs> decided they were going to take the game by the scruff of the neck. I was like, well, Tommy Winoso soon to score today. Scored yeah. too early. Aye. And Chip Allen Ruff. Do you remember the Dares goal? Be wide. Anyway. Oh. For Stevie, do you see yourself in Andrew Robertson? What are the similarities and differences in your games? No, I see the similarities. Yeah. Are there some differences? Is there anything that? Like, well, he's, predomin he's predominantly left-footed. And you were just. I was probably. I was. I was giving me left, but I wasn't. I was predominantly right-footed. Yeah, he could go and play in the middle of the park. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. a little I more versatile, I could, right? I could play in different positions. Is there anything that he does better than you that you think, like, man, I would Yeah, he, uh, his lifestyle. Yeah, wow. just, that's he, it. He, he, he eats difficult. I mean, there's a we lot. We don't even know what Andy does on his free time, but we know it's a I mean, healthier lifestyle than he Stevie. He can eat less pies than Stevie. Yeah. Which, uh, which, which is another amazing <laughs> feat, really, yeah. when you think yeah. about the amount of pies. I like his stuff down his throat. Exactly. I love to see him on a Saturday after a week I had. That's right. I mean, could Andy Robertson play for Liverpool uh, three hours after having egg, steak and chips? I mean, would Andy Robertson get a game with the darts team on a Monday and the pool team on a Tuesday? And still, I don't think so. No, still be rocking it at training. Uh, so. uh, another question here from Riley, the big golden doodle. Right. Uh, we're talking about, I guess, the, the videos that we've been seeing again after the World Cup squad announcements. Was this the Brazil one you were talking about? Yeah, it's a, I've yeah. not seen any other ones. I saw a bit of Brazil on yesterday's show. A lot of the, a lot of the videos we've been seeing is as the Brazilian... And Pedro! That's Pedro. what we're getting to, yeah. So, we saw Pedro propose to his girlfriend yesterday. How did you guys propose to your wife? 
Wow, so we're turning it into a uh, romantic edition of Extra Oh, I don't know. It was so long ago. <laughs> and did you propose in shorts? Because that's that was the real story here, right? Is that uh, Pedro was wearing shorts when he proposed. Do you, how did I, you do it? I think it was a proposal. <laughs> I don't I know why in, I went to Steve. It was in this. the Pembroke Club in Liverpool. Okay. What's a what kind? What is that club like? A uh, it, well, during the day it sells beer. Okay, during the day, it's during it's the cold. day, they'd snooker tables and stuff. Okay. And then at night it was like a discotheque or a it kind of. Yeah. So it was a, a Saturday lounge. night. A lounge. <laughs> a lounge. Saturday lounge. night in the Pembroke Club. It was not down on your knee or a, I didn't even have a ring or anything. <laughs> As you said, I don't even mind. <laughs> You didn't get on your knee. No. You didn't have a ring or anything. No. You did it at a snooker hall. No. In between. Very on brand. I went like that. I have to say. And then I went like that. And she went, are you serious? And I went, yeah. And she went, oh, of course. And then she never spoke to me again for the rest of the night. Because <laughs> she wasn't sure whether it was serious or not. Uh, Craig? Dead romantic. I honestly can't remember. <laughs> can't oh, my God. <laughs> so long ago. Uh, Gab, you're a, you're a romantic, aren't you? I did, yes. I, we were we were up in the Alps. You know, wow. Family summer home, starry night. I was going to say up in the Alps. Um, <laughs> you know, looking out into the darkness. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah, Gab. <laughs> yeah, family uh, summer you know, home. I was not in the attic, Craig. I was down from the attic, thank you. <laughs> that was Stevie uh, said that. It was, Gap, it was outside, and uh, yeah. Why didn't you All take right. her to? Why didn't you take Eleanor sorry, to your summer sorry, home Greg. in the Alps? <laughs> yeah. Proposal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you uh, didn't have a ring. Yeah. The tree. Uh, all the right. That'll do it for us. Uh, thanks to Gab, <laughs> Stevie, and Craig. Thanks to you for sending in the questions. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.